Hey everyone, I'm Lauren, also known as Stark and Strange here on YouTube and Instagram, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to make this rotating split reveal transition. To start this transition, make sure your clips are laid out something like this. These two clips here will be part of the split transition, and this third clip should be laid underneath both of them and will be part of the reveal. To split our clips in half, go up here and select the rectangle masking tool. Now go down to this little icon here and choose the proportional grid. Now we can divide our clip into a perfect half, so go up to the middle line, and from this point draw a mask from one corner to the other. Try to line it as best you can to the sides of this clip. Now once your mask is ready, simply press V on your keyboard to go back to the main selection tool, and double click on one of these little squares, and hold shift, and drag your shape mask to the center so that it covers your whole character. Once you're happy with your mask, simply go down to your clip options, press M to open up the mask, select mask 1, copy it, and paste it onto your second clip. Now hide the first layer so we can see how our mask looks. If it isn't lined up perfectly, just simply press V on your keyboard to make sure you're using the main selection tool, double click on one of these squares as we did before, and adjust your clip accordingly. Once you're happy with how your clips look, simply deselect the proportional grid, and now we can align our layers to one side of the screen. So click your top layer, go to align, and either choose the left or right side. Now go to the second clip, and now choose the other side. Now we're gonna have them slide inwards. So select both of your clips and turn on motion blur here and here. Now go up to effects and presets and search up motion tile. Apply it to your clips and increase the output height to somewhere around 300. Make sure you also select mirror edges. Now go ahead and copy this motion tile onto the second clip and now press P on the first clip, right click and choose separate dimensions now go onto Y position and make a keyframe at the start of your clip. Make your second keyframe somewhat past the marker of your second beat. Now go to your first keyframe and drag whichever way you want your slide to begin. So I'm going to go upwards this time. And I will select both of my keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant and easy ease. Go to my graph editor and make my graph look something like this. And I'm also going to drag this first keyframe backwards by one. Now we're going to do a similar thing to the other side, but drag it the other way. So press P on your keyboard, go to position, right click, separate dimensions. Again, click the Y. You can click this arrow here on your first set of keyframes to go to the exact spot of where you've put your keyframe before. Click the second clip's keyframe here and then go back to the beginning and drag it the opposite way. So since I went upwards before, I am now going to go down. Once you're happy, once again, highlight your keyframes and easy ease them. Go to the graph editor and do your graph as so. And again, I'm gonna drag this first keyframe backwards a bit. So now your clip should look something like this. Next, we're gonna create the line in the middle. So go up to layer and new shape layer. Tune the shape layer to your liking. Now go over to where your split clips are and click on the pen tool and first mark the top of your clip in between these two and use the separation of the clips to guide your straight line. Increase the stroke to however wide you want it to be. So I might do mine around 15. And next we're gonna have this stroke reveal. So again, make sure you select motion blur on this shape layer, go to S and uncheck this linking icon. This will allow us to move the scale value separately in terms of X and Y. So change the second 100 to zero, then press a keyframe at the beginning of your clip and then wherever you'd like the line to be fully revealed. So I'll do mine around here and then do your second keyframe and increase this value to 100 again. Now select both of your keyframes and do your graph however you like. It may take a bit longer to play around with this one to find a graph that suits your liking. So just play around with your graph until you find something that you like. Once you're happy with how this looks, simply go back to your main timeline and duplicate the shape layer. Now that we have our split ready, we are going to create a new null layer. So go up to layer, new, and then null object and trim it to your liking. Select both of these two clips and parent them to the null layer. Also make sure the null layer has motion blur turned on. Then go to one shape layer and pair it to the bottom clip. And then go to the second shape layer and pair it to the second clip. You can also drag these in between each other to make it a bit easier to identify which one is linked with which. Okay, so I'm gonna hide this bottom layer for the moment. And now we're gonna keyframe the split of these two sides. So go to your first clip again to position, and this time keyframe the X position around whatever point you like. So since we are using this marker here as the center point for the transition, we want the fastest point to be by this marker. So you do your keyframe somewhat like this where your marker is in the middle. All right, so now we're gonna keyframe the position outwards like so. I can also turn on the proportional grid to make sure that the clips split apart evenly on both sides. We can always change this later as well. So we'll do something like this. So highlight your keyframes, easy ease, 
and graph them like so. Move your timeline indicator to the middle of where you want the transition to be the fastest so that can act as a point of reference. So basically we want to make our graph so that the steepest point is in the middle here. This can take a bit of adjusting and afterwards it might not be perfect and I may have to come back and adjust it later but for the moment we'll just work with this. So now your clips will look like this as if it's splitting off to the side. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for the other side. So go to your next clip, press P, X position, go to the, where your other keyframe is, keyframe the position again, and then move it to the left this time to a somewhat similar position as the first clip. So something like that should work fine. Highlight your keyframes, easy ease them, graph editor, and oh my gosh, I just made a mistake. I just accidentally put my keyframe here, but no bother, just drag it all the way to where it's actually meant to be over here. Um, anyway, back to the graph editor, and once again, move your timeline indicator to the middle, and make sure the steepest point is where the timeline indicator is. So around something like that. You can also click on the X position of your first clip again to make a reference to make sure your graphs look somewhat similar. So I think if I steepen this a little bit, they should be all right. So now we have something that looks like this. I might actually drag out my keyframes further. So I'll spread them apart a bit more because I want this to flow better than what it does at the moment. So now that I've changed them, I can go back to the graph editor and I can actually see both of them if I select them at the same time. And I can hold shift and drag these back like this. And I might just move this one back a bit more. So now they should appear like so. Now see, we're running into a bit of a problem here while our line isn't exactly aligning. So I'm just gonna select it and go to align and make sure it's in the center and not wherever it is deciding to be at the moment. So now deselect the proportional grid and now go onto your null layer and press R. You can have this start with your X position changes as well. So we'll make a rotation at the first X position keyframe and another keyframe at the end of the X position. So I want my rotation to be around 60, but I've now realized that I've moved the position too far back. So we can easily just adjust this by moving them forwards a tad bit, try and make sure they're even on both sides. Then we can go back into the graph editor just to make sure everything is okay. So I might need to change this up a bit. So yeah, for this transition, you're going to have to do a lot of adjusting probably because it doesn't usually turn out perfect the first try. So anytime you need to change anything, just do, it's perfectly fine. So now we have this pretty ugly <laughs> rotation. So we're just gonna easy ease these as so. And we're gonna graph them like we did for the X position. So we want the steepest point to be in the middle where my time indicator is. So we're going to keyframe them like so. In our preview, it now appears like this, but it's still not perfect yet. So next we're gonna increase the scale. So go onto your null layer again, press S. Press U twice on your keyboard to see all of your keyframes and go to the end of your rotation and increase the scale however far you might need. We're going to graph them like we did before with the rotation, preview, and again, I also, I also don't like how far this position is going, so I'm again going to change it and move them um, more to my liking and change up the graphs if I need to. It should be all right from the looks of things. And another issue I'm running into is this line. <laughs> and to solve this, I can increase the scale on this initial keyframe, so I might increase it to something wider, like 150 should be okay. And I will do the same for the bottom one. All right, so now hopefully your clips should look something like this. So once you're happy with how these clips are being split, simply pre-comp all of these together, except for the last bottom layer. So right click, pre-compose, and make sure these two are selected and press OK. And now we're gonna duplicate this layer. So once you've duplicated it, simply press R on your keyboard and then change the rotation to 90 degrees. Now it should appear like this. And I'm gonna add a half tone to this second layer. So go up to your effects and presets and search up half tone. I'm going to use Sapphire Half Tone, but I'm just using this to separate these two sort of sides from each other. So I'm going to increase the dots frequency to around 212 and I'm going to lighten the dots a bit. And we now have something like this. And now if we unhide our clip from behind, we can see it here. And now I've just realized that my clip isn't long enough and I actually need it to start somewhere around here. So I'm going to drag it. And I'm going to go into this composition and I'm gonna to go to composition settings and I'm gonna increase the duration a bit. So I might just change this to one minute, one second and 30. So 
So yeah, now hopefully your clip is long enough. Okay, so now make sure your clip that you want to be revealed is long enough to start at where these clips are first splitting apart. So I need mine to start around here. As you can see, it's going to be revealed in this little square. So I think I might do a bit of a scale on this reveal layer to have it come in with a bit more flair. So I'm going to press S here and towards the end, I think I will start off with a bigger value. So I will start at 250 and I'll easy ease my keyframes. So I just had to do my scale like so, and I might also just go in and increase my scale because I do not like how this looks. So I might do it to 400 to see if I can make a bit more of an impact with it because this part, this section here, we can't actually see of the clip. Um, actually, I might drag this keyframe forward. Let's see what happens then. As I said, this transition is a whole bunch of experimenting as it does take a bit of time to do. And it's really hard for me to explain as well, so just... <laughs> Alright, yeah, so it's actually better if you bring a keyframe just before you sort of start to see any movement around here. Then all you need to do is add on one of your favourite shake presets, and it should look however you want. I'm not going to make this into a shake tutorial because I kind of suck at shakes, but if you can find one that you're happy with, any should work, any kind of warp or any kind of shake that whatever your favorite shake preset is really. I've chosen this one this time, so now mine looks like this. And once you're done with all of this, as a final detail to this edit, I'm going to add a drop shadow to the split clip. So go up to your effects and presets and search up drop shadow and apply it to your first clip. Change the distance to zero and the softness to however much you want. I'm gonna change mine to around 160, copy it and paste it onto the bottom clip as well. And finally, I'm also going to add a flash. So go up to your effects and presets and I'm gonna use the Sapphire Glow to make a flash, but you can also use brightness and contrast if you don't have Sapphire. I have mine start at one and I keyframe the brightness from wherever I want it to be and I'll have it end at zero around here maybe so press u to see your keyframes select the keyframes that are for the brightness easy ease them and do your graph like this now you should have a subtle flash to go along with your clip and yeah that's basically it you can fix up any of these points to your own liking but this is the general gist of how i do this transition i apologize if this was kind of poorly explained it's quite difficult for me to explain in the moment and as I said, it does require a lot of adjusting as you go, but I do hope this tutorial was helpful for those of you that are looking to make a transition kind of like this. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.